Hey friends, Diana here. How are you today? I'm so excited that uh, you're going to be joining me here on this talk, maybe about uh, half an hour, 30 minutes or so, and we're going to talk about sales. And I know we don't, I don't often talk about sales, but I was invited to talk about sales the other day at an event. Uh, and I thought that I would share the same content with you because here's the thing. We can do lots of marketing, right? But we need to have the sales. We need to be able to talk about money. So if you are listening, please, you know, give me a high five, show me some hearts, show me some love, say hello. Uh, I'd really appreciate knowing that you were there. So today or this afternoon, what I'm going to talk about are what you can see here, the five, you know, common roadblocks or the five M's of sales. And uh, I'm also going to share with you the number one way to make your sales so much easier. You're going to say, Diana, why didn't I think of that before? Right? So awesome. Um, we all struggle with sales. There's not one person out there who hasn't said at one time, oh my God, you know, I'm having trouble with sales. And uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is mindset. And what do I mean by mindset? What I mean by mindset is all the talk that's going up here in our head. <clears throat> Excuse me you know, those thoughts. And if you have studied Bob Proctor or even, you know, somebody like Louise Hay, you know that thoughts in our head actually create our actions, which create our results and which create the reality for us in our lives today. So thoughts can be a huge, huge deterrent from sales. So Maybe you have said something like this in the past. Oh, I hate sales. Or I'm no good at sales. Sales are creepy. So if you're watching this on the rerun or the replay, just type in for me what kinds of things you have perhaps thought about sales in the past. Um, yeah, that would be great if you could type in because you know what? Whatever you are thinking, Somebody else is probably thinking exactly the same thing. That's right. I remember very clearly, probably th about three years ago, I was sitting on a coaching call with my own coach. And um, I said these words out loud. I'm not good at sales. And the words were no sooner out of my mouth than I realized the story that I was telling myself. Because truthfully, sales is really about service, right? Serving your clients. Each one of you is an amazing expert at what you do. And if you are not inviting people to have sales conversations, if you're not inviting people to work with you, then you are doing them a disservice. That's right, you're cheating them from your expertise. So instead of saying, you know, these bad things, instead of allowing your itty bitty shitty committee to talk negativity, negatively about sales, <laughs> how about you frame it, reframe it this way, okay? So let's say you say, I hate sales, I'm no good at sales. What if you turn that around and say something like, I'm getting better and better at sales conversations every day. It's just a total reframe. Hey, Christina, nice to have you join us. Anybody else on there? I know there is. So send me some hearts, send me some love while I get a sip here. So the mindset of sales can be a huge deterrent to moving sales conversations along. Thank you so much. All right. Sales is service, so just have that mindset shift in your head. Let's talk about money, the second M up here, because sometimes people associate sales with, oh, I have to ask for money. Um, 
And I want to quote uh, a great author, uh, Jen Sincero, who wrote a book, um, You're a Badass at Making Money. So if anybody has never read that, I highly recommend it. And she compares sex and money in the same thing. So here's what she says. Just think of them, both of them this way. You're supposed to know what you're doing. No one teaches you anything. And three, you're never supposed to talk about it because that's just not classy. And it applies to money the same, right? You're supposed to know what you're doing, right? How many of us were ever taught anything? No one teaches us, so we, how can we get better? And shit, we're never supposed to talk about it, right? So I was recently at a networking event and uh, the MC said at the beginning of the event, she said, you know, we're here to network and it's about business. And she encouraged us all to have business conversations. And when I got to this talk part in my talk, I said, so how many of you have actually talked about money? How many of you have actually said the money word? How many of you have actually said uh, how much you want to make, how much you're not making, how much you did make? Nobody in the room. Nobody. So money is really, really important. And I'll honestly say that 99% of the clients that I work with are undercharging and I help them increase their fees. They have trouble talking about their fees. They're very uncomfortable with it, but uh, I help them raise their fees. And I was in exactly the same situation. And I remember back to 2015 when I hosted my first live shift event and it was in Montreal and I was preparing for this event and I had a speaking coach and I had a mindset coach. And I had to, you know, I was on stage in front of 100 women entrepreneurs. And the idea was that I wanted to sell my coaching program. So I wanted to sell a coaching program on one hand that was about $2,000. And in order to do that, my speaking coach said, in order to sell a $2,000 program, I had to explain to people the value of my $10,000 coaching program. And I went $10,000. And they said, yes, I had to be able to say $10,000 just as if it was my name, as confidently, as easily as I said my name. I had to work at that so freaking hard. It was unbelievable. But what it did was I actually sold one of those $10,000 programs and I also sold the $2,000 programs. So being able to say what you're worth and to charge what you're worth is so, so, so important because I guarantee every single one of you out there is worth more than you're charging currently. Okay. So that's the first two, mindset and money. The third thing about sales, and it's a common roadblock, is that especially as women, we are reluctant to make that invitation, right? We are reluctant to actually ask people to work with us because we think that, oh, yes, thank you, thank you for those hearts. We think that if we ask people, that's being pushy right? But you have to show up and you have to ask again in that same confident energy that you know that what you have to offer is exactly the right thing. It is exactly the thing that those clients of yours need, right? And I know it can be you know, we can do it uh, maybe for our down sell. Hey, Judy, say hello, say hello. And, you know, give me a high five. I so like to hear when people are joining me because then I feel like I'm not talking to myself. So we're talking about, we have talked about the first, the mindset. We've talked about the money and we're talking about making the invitation. 
right? Because that is the whole energy of a sales conversation. Your clients must feel that confidence from you. And you have to ask them to take the next step. So I want to share a story. Uh, several years ago, I had worked with two women and they were kind of like partners in the business. And they had finished making, uh, we'd finished that uh, contract, if you will. It was, you know, let's say three months and we had finished that. And I was asking them to take the next step with me. Well, I wasn't confident. I wasn't confident in my price. And it went something like this. Well, thank you so much for working with me. And, you know, I, um, I, I, I have another proposal for you to continue working with me. And, you know, um, just see what you think it's like. And, uh, you know, the price is this, but if that's not within your budget, then totally, you know, maybe we can make some adjustment. Kind of wishy-washy. I wasn't making a strong recommendation about what their next step should be. Do you think they continued to work with me? No, because that confident energy wasn't there. So make the invitation and be really clear and be really strong with your confidence. Okay, that's about making the invitation. The next uh, M, if you will, or next common roadblock is what I call methodology. When I started to learn about sales conversations, this was one of the big ahas that I had. And the big aha was that I needed a, and I'll use the word script, but it's not always a script. It is a format that we follow, that we take our clients down sort of a path so that they see the value in working with us. And that methodology, when you first start out, yes, it does need to be a script. And it needs to be the same from A to B to B. Somebody says, hey, Tanny, 100%, fake it till you make it until it gets confident. Exactly, exactly. Thanks for chiming in. So in a methodology, um, it needs to be the same. It needs to go from A to B to C to D. And why? It's so that we can go back and number one, we can improve it over time, right? We can improve it over time and we can make comparisons. Well, that worked, but that didn't work. So it's so, so important that you have a script or a, a template at least that you follow and that you know what your conversion rate is. So when I started sales conversations, and like most people, we start out, we're lucky if we can convert one in maybe three conversations that we have. Now that I have tweaked my conversation with people, I would honestly say probably about 90 to 95% of those people that I actually have a sales conversation with I will convert them into a client. But that's only because I know the step by step by step by step. And I follow that formula every single time. Um, one of the big things here in methodology is learning to be the leader of the conversation. And I know this was me. Um, I would get into a sales conversation with someone and I would, because I didn't have a script, I would kind of let them lead the conversation and we would take, you know, an hour on the phone when it should only take 20 minutes. But you must be the leader of the conversation. That shows authority. It shows confidence, etc. So I'll just walk you through kind of what my sales process looks like. First of all, I have a pre-qualifying questionnaire. Why do I pre-qualify people? Because if they're not interested in answering 10 easy questions that will make our time together on that sales call more uh, effective, then they're probably not my right client. 
Okay, so first of all, they fill out a pre-questionnaire. They book a call with me, and this is all done automatically. They get reminders. That's done automatically, and we get on Zoom. We get on Zoom, and the first part of the conversation is about building a little bit of rapport, and it might be one or two sentences. That's it. You know, oh, I see you live in, I don't know, Vancouver. Well, I have a great friend in Vancouver, or maybe they have grandkids. What is it that you can make this connection with? And then I launch right into the fact that, you know, this call is going to be 20 minutes. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to just review your application. Is that okay? What do they say? Yes. Then I say, okay, I'm going to review the application so that I'm not missing anything. I'm really clear about what it is, you know, that we're going to talk about. Um, and then I will have some questions for you. Is that okay? Yes. And then I'll say, and then after you can ask me some questions, is that okay? Yes. I have three yeses from them and we were just barely into our conversation, right? So it's really important that you lead the conversation and you find out what their problem is. You're going to offer them the solution to their problem, hopefully, that they're a right fit for you. If they are not a right fit for you, what is it that you're going to refer them to? If they are a right fit for you, what is your recommendation? Easy peasy. Okay, so methodology. Methodology. It's so, so important. Okay, we are at, we've done the mindset, we've talked about the money, we've talked about making an invitation, and we've talked about methodology. Number five is marketing. And you go, well, what does marketing have to do with sales, Diana? Well, marketing has everything to do with sales. If you have great marketing, your sales are going to be easy peasy. Because as I say, marketing is what leads people to your door. Sales conversations are what opens the door. So you've got to have great marketing in order to get those right fit clients for you. It's got to be. So if your marketing isn't working, um, maybe it's kind of, maybe it sounds something like this. You're not getting enough potential clients booking appointments. Or the right people might not be booking appointments, right? Or if you're doing uh, online or social media, you're not getting any uh, interaction with your posts or interaction about your emails. You're not getting any of that engagement, right? Or maybe your uh, revenues aren't where they want to be. Or maybe you're really freaking overwhelmed and frustrated by all the marketing you think you should be doing. Or you don't know what to say to market your expertise. Or Maybe you're doing what I call the marketing hustle, right? You're throwing, you're picking a marketing tactic, throwing it against the wall and seeing if it's going to work. Raise your hand, give me a high five, anything like that. Every, anybody ever done it or is currently doing it? So any one of those things, you know, kind of raise your hand, uh, comment, which one of those is it? You're not getting enough clients, not enough the right clients. You're not getting any engagement in your marketing. Your revenue's not where it wants to be, anything like that. You don't know what to say to market, or you're doing that marketing hustle. Cool, good. All right, those are symptoms that maybe your marketing just isn't working. It's just not working. And how can we change that? Well, in a week or so, I'm going to do uh, another training um, that will focus around, and I call it plug your marketing leaks, right? 
uh, if you imagine a bucket of water or a bucket, okay, we'll say this, we'll say this is a bucket and the water is pouring into the bucket. The water, those are the leads that you're getting from your marketing, whether it's networking, speaking, online, social media, whatever it is, they're going into the bucket. But for some reason, your bucket sprung a leak over here, over here, and so you're not capturing those, right? And so I say there's about nine marketing leaks that I'm gonna talk about in this future training. But Today, I want to share with you three of the most common marketing leaks that are making your marketing so that you're not getting the results, you're not getting the revenue, you're not getting the clients that you want. And the first one is that you, in your marketing, whether it's whether you stand up at networking events, whether you're standing up on stage, whether you are marketing online, you sound just like someone or you sound just like everyone else. So this could be, could be, and I'm sure if you go to networking events, you've heard this before. Some people will stand up and they will say the three deadly words. The three deadly words are, I am a, and if Judy's still here, I'll pick on financial advisors. I am a financial advisor. I am a real estate agent. I am a business coach. What happens when we say those three deadly words is that we put ourselves in a box with exactly all the other people in our industry. All the other people. Nothing different. And if there's nothing different, why should a client hire you? Right? Okay. That's one of the biggest mistakes. You're sounding just like everybody else out there in the marketplace. Number two, you might be talking in what I call your expert language. So expert language, all of you are experts at what you do. Very, very good, you're experts at what you do. And as experts, we can often get caught up in here using words that are industry specific. So it's kind of like going to the doctor and expecting him to explain the results of a test, right? Some sort of medical test. And he starts using words that are this big. And you're sitting there and you're just wishing he would speak plain English, plain, simple English. Well, that's what happens very often. I've seen it happen in, you know, bookkeepers health uh, coaches are very often they're caught up in their own words. I was working with a lady the other day and I asked her what she did and she said, I humanize business. I went, what the heck does that mean? Right? I humanize business. When I say that you need to speak simply, it needs to be at a grade four level or a about that simple simple language right so you might i might say for instance i help people with marketing that actually makes them more money i help them get more clients simple language so that they understand okay so big mistakes are you sound like everyone else you use expert language and the third mistake when it comes to your marketing and your messaging is that very often our messages are too long, too confusing, they're not memorable, and they're not repeatable. That's a lot, right? Well, let me share an example with you. A uh, past client came to me, and uh, again, you know, so what do you do? And she says, well, I'm an energy worker. I kind of scratch my head and I go, energy worker, what does that mean? So we worked together to craft her, what I now call a Twitter pitch. So it is a short, concise sentence or Twitter, 140 characters or less, that's the idea, her Twitter pitch. And what she really did was, 
help people alleviate chronic pain. Three simple words. However, coming from the health industry, coming from sort of the spiritual world, she had trouble in her own head, she admits, going out there and presenting herself as someone who helps people alleviate chronic pain. And so it took her some time to sort of step into those shoes. However, I'm pleased to say that we were on the phone the other day. She went out to a networking event and she says, Tana, I just thought I would step outside my comfort zone and I would say those three words. And I said, so what were the results? She said, you wouldn't believe it. I had four people come up to me afterwards and say, either they wanted to work with me or they knew someone who should work with me. That's what I want for each of you. Okay. I want your marketing message to be so simple and clear that it leads the right people to your door. And all you have to do is have a sales conversation to open that door. So the secret to having easier sales conversations is better marketing or marketing that actually works, effective marketing. That is the secret I want to share with you. The fact is that entrepreneurs have a lot of difficulty speaking about our own businesses. And I will share that fact that is true for me. Uh, about six months ago, I went and had somebody else actually put their eyes on my marketing. And every time I do that, I'm able to tweak it a little better because these people look at my business objectively. And that's what I would like for you. So one of the things is that um, I'm offering an upcoming workshop called How to Talk About Your Business So That Prospects will actually listen and hire you. So what are we going to do in the day long workshop? We are actually going to clarify what it is, the one thing that you are brilliant at so that you will stand out from the crowd. You will craft your Twitter pitch, your first draft of your Twitter pitch, because really and truly it is a draft until you go out there and test it in the marketplace. You'll also leave with some key phrases that you can use in your marketing over and over again so that you will see some consistency. Uh, you'll also know 30 plus places that you can use your Twitter pitch. And here is the kicker. We are actually going to take your Twitter pitch and then look at your marketing collateral. What do I mean by marketing collateral? Your website, your business card whatever other marketing collateral you have. And you're going to, we're going to look at it with fresh eyes and see how we can create some consistency between your Twitter pitch and your marketing collateral. Now I know some people go, oh, but that means I might have to do my whole website. No. When we look at things like this, 99% of the time, it's words that need to change. That's it words. Simple, simple words. We're also going to, uh, let me show you a sales funnel and why I know this to be true. This is a sales funnel that all of you can use in your business. Anybody can use no matter what. And you can either use it as a sales funnel so that, you know, leads are coming in like this, or you can think about it as building blocks, one on top of the other, whichever visual is best for you. Okay, so the first thing that we need is what I call your Twitter pitch. It's that one line that is going to make it interesting and curious for people. So we need that. We need the Twitter pitch. Next, you'll need either a website or a uh, 
or it could be just a landing page, right? That is consistent. So I'll say website. Uh, what would we have next? What would we have next? Sorry, I was just looking at my phone at Buzz. Then we have to figure out how is it that you are going to capture leads. So this is some sort of lead generator. Lead gen. Okay. Next, it's going to be how are you going to cultivate those leads? So what do I mean by cultivate? Here's the thing. If you're lead generating, only about less than 10% of those people who are interested in what you are doing, only less than 10% are going to want to purchase from you now. A big mistake people make in their marketing is that that's all they do is this. They cap, they are working on lead gen, attracting, magnetizing, whatever you want to call it. However, what about the, so this is 10%, less than 10%. What about the 90%? You have to cultivate that relationship, that know, like, and trust. And building that know, like, and trust, how could you do that? You cultivate it. It could be that you have a Facebook group like this one. It could be that you have an email list. It could be that you're, uh, you're doing some other, or maybe you have a podcast that people listen to. Some other form of cultivating that know, like, and trust. Okay. And last but not least, we get to the convert part, which is the sales. But what I want to show everyone is that it's all building. One on top of one, on top of one, on top of one. You just can't, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure some of you, and I did this before, I would go out and say, well, I can't go into business until I have a website. Eh, wrong. How can you build a website? How can you go out there and speak until you know what your message is? You've got to know what your message is here. So your sales funnel, it's pretty simple. Whether you do networking, whether you do speaking, um, Maybe you have a uh, lead magnet. You know, another one is you could be doing direct, um, what do they call it? I want to say direct mail, but it's direct marketing. Right, again. All of those things. So how do you do this? The simple sales funnel, it all starts right here with your Twitter pitch, okay? My workshop uh, is going to be, there's going to be one in Ottawa, which is February 28th, and I will post the link to that uh, so that you can attend. Really, you know, the early bird price is $197 for the day. Yeah, $197 for the day. It's... Um, somebody else I know, uh, they charge about thousands of dollars for this. Because why? Because it is the basis of everything that you do. So I hope this has been beneficial. Who got something? Who walked away with something today? Let me just know, you know, press the like button. Uh, what was the one takeaway that you had today for this uh, sales training? Yes, yes, cool. Just write in the comments if you wouldn't mind. What was the one thing that was that you found was the biggest takeaway that you got? I'd really love to see this, and I'm sure that those people who are um, who will be watching the replay will also like to know what your biggest takeaway is. So I'd really, really appreciate that. Okay, who's saying something? Oh, I got some high fives. I got some loves. I got some good stuff. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, so that's your 
five common sales roadblocks and how to navigate them. And uh, if you have any questions, I okay, just hopped on the last five minutes. Thanks, Darlene. No problem. Yes, we will go to replay. And thank you so much, everybody. And uh, next week, I will probably have a recorded video for you. No uh, live, because I will be in somewhere sunny, warm, and sandy. Take care for now. Thanks a lot. Bye.